Hi everyone. So in the next series of videos, uh, I'll be discussing various experiments that led to quantum mechanics. This is actually split into different subtopics in um, topic 7. So uh, you'll see that they're split into 7b, 7c, and so on. Uh, but it's important to kind of, you know, uh, see the whole picture first at this point. There's several experiments, starting with the black body radiation, which we're going to discuss uh, in this video and the next uh, couple of videos, um, that eventually led people to propose this idea that the world, at least in the microscopic scale, in the small scale, is very different than the world as we understand it in the macroscopic or the large scale, which is the scale that we usually interact with every day. And the four experiments that I'll be discussing is black body radiation, photoelectric effect, uh, atomic emission spectra, and then the double slit and electron diffraction experiment. There are people associated with each of these experiments, primarily whether they um, usually not because they conducted the experiment because they came up with an equation or, a, or an idea uh, or a theory that helped explain the experiment itself okay so we're going to start in this video to talk about the black body radiation and it's important to understand you know in black body radiation first you need to understand what exactly uh, is a black body okay now before we start there i want to kind of point out that in the 1900, uh, you know, that was the time when um, a lot of physics had uh, basically been proposed. A lot of, I, I should say, a lot of theories of physics had been proposed to solve many of the problems that people were encountering at the time. So, in fact, um, Lord Kelvin, who, uh, as you remember from prior description, of course, he's the one with proposing the Kelvin scale for the te absolute temperature, but he also uh, had a lot of uh, additional contribution to science. He's a very well-respected figure in science at, at that time. And he uh, said that there's really nothing new that you can discover in physics uh, at this point, which is at the 1900. And he said that all really that remains to be done in physics at this point is just to make more precise measurement because you know maybe at that point we didn't really understand that the speed of sound is a certain value we just make more precise measurements and boy could you know if, if somebody could be wrong he was way wrong okay because right after his statement here in the next you know 20 30 years there was a huge explosion of new theories of physics that really help us understand what is going on in, uh, you know, like I said, physics in the microscopic scale. So it is just kind of to point out that in science, there's always these, um, you know, changes that happen in the way people look at things. And, and even though you think you understand something very well, a lot of times, you know, th there's certain things that come up and then you realize that, oh, all this time I've been not really understanding it correctly. I have to look at it from this perspective. So th he, this is a quote that's, you know, hopefully will motivate a lot of you to, to come into science think about that there's all there's always problems to solve in science it's something to kind of um, energize you uh, in, in learning uh, more about science and about chemistry specifically now let's go back to black body radiation so what exactly is black body radiation so uh, the way uh, physics uh, envision a black body is something that looks like this so let's say you're in a room that's completely dark and you have a uh, an object uh, where you can have energy goes in, let's say, in the form of, you know, light, for example. Okay, so you shine light through into this uh, box, and inside this box, which you can think of this looks like an oven or something like that, where it's completely black inside, right? So if you open your, your uh, oven at, at home, for example, it's, it's com the inside is usually completely black, right? And you shine light into here, because this is a black object, uh, all the light will be absorbed by the... Uh, object because black uh, the reason we see black is because uh, it absorbs all kinds of energy as we as I mentioned the, in the previous topic when I talked about light and what we color we actually observe so because it's black it's absorbing all this energy now if you shine uh, and it's not reflecting any of those light because that's that's why it's uh, has a black color now if you shine light that's uh, intent you know that has enough of an energy okay the black body is going to absorb all of this light and eventually it's going to radiate this light. So radiate is, is different than um, 
than reflecting the light. Okay, so the, the light is not being reflected, but it's being radiated. In other words, this object absorbs all the light energy. And then, because as a result of absorbing all this energy, it becomes hotter, right? The temperature increases. At some point, the, uh, the, the temperature, if it's hot enough, if this, this object is hot enough, it would start to glow or radiate light, okay? Now, that light um, is a radiation, so that's why we call this phenomenon black body radiation, because this object is uh, black, uh, it absorbs all, all light and then it radiates uh, light after um, it absorbs a certain amount of energy. Now the color of the black body corresponds to its temperature, like I said earlier. So if you, if you give enough energy to this black body, eventually it would uh, heat up enough that it starts to glow in the region of light that you can actually observe. So what are some examples of black body? Well, you see it in, uh, you know, these are all samples of black body, examples of black body. Okay, so if you have an electric stove at home, you notice that they all look like these rings, right? They're rings of metals. Um, and when you turn it on, really what you're doing is you're heating it. You're, you're providing energy through electricity to these metal rings, okay? Now you can see that as you provide, you know, when you turn on the light to, uh, for example, the low setting, or turn on the stove, I should say, to the low setting, uh, this doesn't really glow. Usually it still looks kind of dark, right? But you can feel it if you put your hand near it, you can feel that it's, hot, it's you know, it's warm. If you crank up the, the setting to medium, for example, then you start seeing a little bit of a glow. You start seeing some color showing them. If you crank it up to high, then you get really... Uh, you know, starting to really bright, you know, reddish, oranges. Initially, it's a little yellow, and then later on, it gets a little more reddish, okay? So that's really an example of a black body. So initially, it's black, but as you put in more energy, it absorbs all that energy, and then it emits the energy in the form of light, okay? Uh, now, the, uh, the, the reason this happened, we'll, we'll discuss this in a second, but the idea is that when you're putting that energy through electricity into this object, the electrons in this metal uh, gets you know all this energy and because they get all this energy they, they start moving around at a faster speed so this is referred to as an oscillation okay so oscillation which I'll repeat again later is, is kind of moving you know the, the movement of these electrons as they get heated up okay now when they get heated up at some point they're gonna transfer that energy to uh, light Okay, so if you remember in the previous chapter when we talk about thermal equilibrium, we say that when two objects are at a different temperature, one of the higher temperature object will transfer energy to a lower temperature object. So same idea here. The electron are at higher energy, it has to transfer that energy to something else, and that something else is light. Okay, so then you see this glow because the light then gets emitted out of the, uh, out of the object. Okay. Another example is this incandescent uh, light bulb, you know, the type of old light bulbs that you used to see. This is basically uh, usually a tungsten wire connected between the two electrodes. And again, the way this thing works is you, you know, you hook this up into a, a, a socket, right? And the socket is connected to electricity. So if you turn on the uh, electricity, electricity is going to flow into here. That's energy. That energy is then going to heat up the uh, tungsten wire and at some point when there's enough energy that wire is going to start to glow because the temperature is very high. A uh, candle is another example, right? When you provide this flame you can see that there's a certain color associated with it and so that's why we, I always say, you know, we always say in the lab that if you want a, you want a hotter fire or a lower or, or a colder fire and really what we mean of course all, all fire is hot but you can get something that's a little hotter if the color is changing, just like in this example here, okay? So really black body radiation is the study of how heated objects, right? Objects that are at a certain temperature emit light and the light uh, have different wavelengths because the energy of this light is associated with the temperature of these objects, okay? So the hotter temperature will have uh, a certain color and the, you know the, it will emit a certain color and then the, the lower temperature object would emit a different color. So let me just show you again another example of a black body. So let's say you know this is if, if you're if you're heating up a piece of metal like in this case it, you know it's a, somebody who does iron work for example is heating up this piece of iron to try to shape it to, to a certain shape. 
you notice that here's this actually a scale of temperature going from 1000 degrees Fahrenheit to about 2500 degrees Fahrenheit and you can see that the color of this piece of iron would just change as a function of temperature the color of the light that's being emitted by the iron so if you heat up the iron okay it's getting all these energy the electrons start to oscillate a lot more and at some point you start to get you know higher and higher uh, energy light being emitted and the light at the higher energy have a different color or wavelength than light at lower energy. Okay?